All right, sweet. I'd like to make this a very interactive session. As I mentioned, it's about increasing the productivity. It's about uh, ensuring that you get the best value out of the products you're already using. So in, in turn, uh, I'd like to just go through the basic house rules to make sure we get the best uh, productivity out of the session. So in, like internally and with all other people we meet with, we encourage uh, basically <laughs> turning on your videos just to basically show off each other's smiles. But I do understand because a lot of us are still working from home, so we, we're probably very comfortable uh, and wouldn't want to sh open those videos. But uh, that being said, that's one of the house rules over there. Moving on, please just ensure that you mute your mics. Just avoid any background noise as well. As I mentioned, as I mentioned, I'd like to make this a very interactive session. There'll be a couple of questions that I'll be throwing your way, um, just to make it as easy and as 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 efficient as possible. I'll basically design the answering scheme where one will be a probable yes and a no will be a zero, a zero will be associated with a no. So your feedback and your comments would basically be very much appreciated. On Microsoft Teams, the application you're using right now, uh, you've used to join the session, there's a comment section. Uh, depending on the version that you have of Microsoft Teams, you should find it on the top right of your screen next to those two little guys over there. Click on there, it opens a comment section. That's where you'll basically be answering with your ones and zeros. And uh, Microsoft Teams also has a very nice cool feature that they've uh, added onto the, the, the software, which basically allows you to raise your hand. By clicking on that hand, you'll basically be grabbing my attention as well as all our attention to make your, your point or ask any questions of that matter. As I mentioned, I'd like to make this a very interactive session. So please feel free to raise your hand at any point or, and unmute your mic just to make your comment. That being said, uh, one of our uh, taglines is breakfast. Uh, feedback is breakfast, breakfast for champions. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'd very much love it if you were to rate this session at the end of the call, but uh, we'll highlight that towards the end of it. And for any any inquiries or any support related inquiries, please I'll add the I'll add the support email address in the comment section there. You can direct any emails onto here for any support related inquiries or if you have any other questions you can just email support at solid systems and they will ensure that it gets triaged accordingly and reaches the right hands cool any questions before i dive in again raise your hand in the middle of the screen there um, and then you grab my attention all right sweet just to introduce OK, <laughs> I see Odette has already embraced the commenting. I just got a zero from her just to basically state that there's no questions from her. Thank you for that. Um, that being said, I'm going to introduce today's two topics, um, primarily focusing on security and uh, data data protection. So with security, we, we basically using an application called multi-factor authentication, previously also known as two-factor authentication, but Microsoft has standardized it to multi-factor authentication. That being said, in terms of your data protection, a lot of you are familiar with OneDrive, but today we'll be focusing on OneDrive Protect. This primarily backs up your personal data, which sits on your machine. This is one key concept we focused on primarily because a lot of people are working from home and in legacy infrastructures, People usually have what you call folder redirection, which backs up their files onto the server, and that in turn gets backed up by the server. But now if when everyone's working at home, it, 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 it basically turns into a situation where they're not connected to the server and any data, any changes they make sit on the machine. So with OneDrive Protect it ensures that your documents, desktop, as well as your images are backed up. Again, rest assured, the feature I'm showing you now is a backup of your own personal data and is not accessible by anybody. Um, and that basically ties into multi-factor authentication, which will ensure that your data when it's online is also protected. Cool. Um, any questions again before I start? All right, sweet. Um, I'm going to proceed to share my screen. 
If at any point you do not see my screen when I start talking, please either raise your hand or unmute your mic and say something. I'll give you some a few few more seconds so that um, my screen can show up on your side. This is primarily because uh, it sometimes depends on your internet connection where when I share my screen, you don't see it. OK, cool. What you should see in front of you is a, a very nice blue screen. On the far left side, you should see uh, some of the Microsoft products that uh, are housed by Microsoft, which is your Microsoft Teams, OneNote, Excel, OneDrive. That Office icon there basically is, a, is where all the applications are housed under one umbrella. That being said, today, as I mentioned, we'll be focusing on multi-factor authentication. I'm going to show you two demonstrations of how it looks like when you log in with multi-factor authentication enabled and when Microsoft authentication is not enabled. So open any browser. What I found is that Microsoft always tries to always make things easier for you in terms of remembering things. Previously, you'd have to have remember this long login or long URL to where you can get to the login screen. Something very easy to remember, office.com. That should be fairly easy to remember. It redirects you to the home login screen where you enter your, your login details. Most companies basically will either send you a link through an email to click on here to log in, try to make your life easier, but I can assure you. Click on office.com, you get you to this landing page, click on sign in, you get to the next nice login page there, which asks for your login details. As I mentioned, the first login I'm showing you is the one that does not have multi-factor authentication enabled. So with you commenting on the uh, comments section over there, can you just um, show me in terms of ones and zeros? Again, one being a yes and zero being a no. Do you know what multi-factor authentication is? Again, one's going to be a yes and zero is going to be a no. OK, I'm getting a couple of ones there. I'm getting uh, I've got one a zero over there. OK, uh, for majority, I'm getting a, I'm getting a couple of ones, which is great. If you know what it is, that means you know what it does. And in most cases, it means that your organization already has it enabled. But because it has it enabled, probably that's why you know about it. But a lot of people do not know what it is. So let me explain it to you. Multi-factor authentication is a second layer of protection, which ensures that your login is more secure. In most cases, Microsoft likes to, as I mentioned, make it so easy for you to access all your information at the palm of your hand. And in turn, they want to make it, they want to make you give you a universal login. That universal login would be your username, which is your email address, and your password. Most cases, what I've come to learn is the fact that through administrators trying to make you change your password on a regular basis, <clears throat> in turn results in you probably writing down the password on a sticky note and sticking it on your on your screen or saving it as your phone or in the worst cases using the same password for everything. So rest assured with what I'm showing you now, you can use the same password and have peace of mind because you will still be required to basically authenticate or approve or allow through the various ways I'm going to be showing you now. So I've created a nice test account for us to use. All right, so at this point, it's asking me for my username and I've entered it and now it's asking for my password. I enter my password. And in this case, you'll just get a, if, you, if this is your machine, I'd obviously recommend keep you, yourself signed in. If not, then just you can go no, but this is asking you if you want to stay signed in. I'll go say yes. Just go never over there. All right, sweet. And just like that, you're in your Microsoft online account. And you'll notice again on your far left, you have access to all the applications that you are licensed to. Another very important thing to highlight, Microsoft is very big on licensing and obviously whatever license you have gives you whatever access to applications or data that you need. So again, we've logged in, all your applications are listed on the left. This just illustrated how simple and easy it is to log in. Great, but now when it comes to security, just imagine now you've backed up all your data or you have access to your company data on here and you've logged in that easily. 
what we try and illustrate here with multi-factor authentication is that peace of mind where you can log in and still be prompted for a second layer of uh, a second layer of security a uh, second layer of security prompt uh, let me just sign into my administrator account on my side just to show you guys how it looks like when Give me a second. How it looks like when multi-factor authentication is enabled. All right, sweet. Now I've just logged into my administrator account. And bearing in mind what I'm enabling now is something that is done by administrator. So in terms of not having it in your organization, we would basically ad strongly advise that you raise it with your IT department. And again, I've added the email address for our support line there. If we are your support partner, just drop us in, um, an email at support.solidsystems.cs.za and we can in action that as soon as possible. All right, sweet user that I've logged in here with is solid365 at this is basically as I mentioned the demo account. So what I want to do now is sign out and show you how it's going to look like with multi-factor authentication enabled. On top of showing you how it looks like I'm also going to show you um, how to set it up. So again close this, open any browser of your preference, Again, go to that website, office.com. All right, so what I'm doing on my side, I'm enabling from the admin portal, multi-factor authentication, it's enabled. Just make sure it's enforced. And what you will notice now, when we click, when we log in with these credentials, we'll get a different screen which asks us to set up multi factor authentication. All right, so I've entered my username, still seems normal. Enter my password, just go never near. And then, boom, when you get to the screen here, as I mentioned, your administrator is the one responsible for enabling this. Again, it's to increase and improve the security within your organization. So, in this instance, you get to the screen here, which basically says your organization needs more information to keep your account more secure. Couldn't have said it better myself. When you click next there, this screen over here basically gives you three options to enable and make your system more secure. One of the options would be for Microsoft to send you an SMS, like in most cases what your bank does or what your accounting system does in terms of sending an SMS to verify or enter a code to ensure that you get to the to get to the login screen. And second option where Microsoft can call you and basically they use this fancy word of saying press the pound key. I always ask myself, what do you mean pound key? But in, a, in actual fact, they just mean the hash the hash button on your on your mobile device, or whatever the case may be. That being said. Uh, the last option, which is my recommended and most preferred option, is the app. So you'll have a drop down here. Unfortunately, because it's a demo account, it's not giving me the option for a text, uh, but uh, you can get a call or mobile app. My recommendation and what I like is the mobile app. And again, in here, it can give you two options. One, it can either receive a notification on the application. You can basically use a verification code that will be on your app. So what am I talking about? Let me pull up an, an image here and show you what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to drag this application onto my left hand side here. So on my screen over here, what you're seeing is the application once I've downloaded it, but the, the name of the application again, if you have, if you want to know what it is, whatever the case may be, I will more than happily paste the link in the comment section there.
right. I'll paste the download link in the comment section over there to basically make it easier for you to download. But it's a free application. You can download it on any device, whether it's Android um, or an Apple device, or God forbid, no one's using a Blackberry here. <laughs> but uh, that being said, uh, you can download any device that's supported. It looks like this once you have added the account. So before we add the account, I'll show you how it looks like. So if for in, if I get to the screen and I basically select mobile app, it will give me an option. So in this case, I'll say receive a notification. For me, I know I'm the only one that logs in here, so I'm the only one who will basically get the notification to approve the login. Again, very important. If you are not trying to log in anywhere and you get a notification or you get a pop up on your screen to allow and log in, just click just deny if you're not sure and maybe contact your IT provider to find out if anybody's trying to log into your account. But again, that peace of mind knowing that you'll get alerted if somebody's trying to log in onto your account on a different browser or from another country for that matter. So that gives you peace of mind. I'm going to I'm going to use this option because I know I'm the only one's going to be logging onto this account. The app is sitting on my phone. I'll show you how the app looks like on your phone as well. I have multiple sitting on my phone with the nice part as well is that even on your phone, the application is encrypted, so I had to unlock it even when the app is sitting on my phone. So I'm not sure if you can, guys can see clearly. Oh, yeah, there we go. I've got a couple of codes sitting on my machine, but that's basically me being a little bit more secure in terms of my client's data, because with every admin page that I log in with our client data, we make sure that is a very secure site. So that being said, I'm going to click set up here to set up this app and what you will see is that you'll get a very nice code. Barcode that you need to scan to add this account to your to your. Uh, Microsoft application, so I'm going to click add on 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 my screen over here and when you click add, I just want to show you what you see. So when you click add, you will get to a screen that looks like this. In most cases, if it's your personal OneDrive, you can click. If it's your personal office application, excuse me, you can click personal account. If it's your work or school account, in this case, it would be your your email address that you use for work. You click on that account. If you're not sure, it's OK. Click on other. It will also work. But if you're sure and you're 100 percent sure that it's like a work account that is linked to Microsoft, go ahead and click on that account. So I've clicked add. I'm going to I'm going to click because I know it's a worker school account. I'm going to click on worker school account. When I click on there. Again, I'll get a screen that looks like this. The way I need to scan the code it takes a split second to scan it and within that split second, it's already added it to my account over here. So once I've added it to my account, I click next. At this point. I get a pop up on my screen to approve or verify. This setup and there we go. I've just clicked approve and then you go next. It is that simple as much as I went on about it. It's basically me trying to illustrate what you, what to do when you're setting it up, but it is that simple. Uh, once multi factor authentication is enabled, just click next, select the method that is convenient for you. Obviously, for uh, if you're not using a phone that basically allows you to download the application, obviously recommended that you either ask the Microsoft to call you and press the town key or get an SMS. So this does not limit you. This does not limit login to people that only have. I'm going to just stop sharing the screen. Uh, this does not limit access to people that only have smartphones. This also basically caters to anybody that has uh, your normal, we call them Dililis. So these normal phones that uh, well just receive and make calls and SMSs. That being said, cool, I have now logged in and that concludes what we call multi-factor authentication. So again, I'm going to ask. Through what I've explained and showed, do you know what multi-factor authentication is? So I'm specifically targeting or asking those ones that uh, responded with the zero. OK. I'm getting a, a one there from uh, Thakir, which is great. I just felt like I've just added value to three more people uh, just in the space of I think 23 minutes, which is great. All right, sweet. Before I move on to our next topic, are there any questions related to Microsoft 
multi-factor authentication. Okay, cool. We have a, a hand raised there by Odette. Uh, Odette, uh, the floor is yours. Um, I just wanted to know, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you 100%. Okay. Uh, if we um, get this enabled now for our company, uh, would everyone that has Office 365 set up um, have to go through this process? Would they, would they all have to do this multi-factor authentication even if they don't really want to? They just want to keep logged in and they don't want to get an SMS or an app or anything like that. But I might, um, but the nine others might not. Okay. That is a beautiful question. I'll tell you why it's beautiful, because if you came to me and you asked me that I need to authenticate every time I log on to my phone, I tell you it's, it's ridiculous. But the beauty about it, to answer your question, yes, they would have to do it, but only once. And I say only once because what Microsoft does is that it builds what you call a trust relationship with whatever device that you are using. So if you have this application set up or if you have multi-factor authentication set up in your organization and you have Outlook, you're setting up Outlook, for instance, for the first time, you will be prompted to use multi-factor authentication to basically uh, authenticate that. Okay, cool. I am the user that is uh, owner of this account and I am setting it up on my machine. Great. You only do it once. When you reboot the next time, when you reboot your machine the next time, or when you uh, open Outlook for the next the, the next time, it has already built that trust relationship between your machine and Microsoft, so you will not be prompted to do it again. Does that answer okay. your question? Yes, yes it does, thank you. Perfect, but yeah, in, initially your organization rolls it out, everyone will need to enable it, and everyone will make need to make sure that it's set up. I've got a hand raised there from Indira. Okay, Libor, I yes. just want to quickly check. So I know like across the firm, we currently have it set up where we actually receive a, um, we receive a, uh, the password, the, the digits, so the verification code, let's call that for us to actually sign Correct. in. That's it and done. We've done that across the firm for it to be standard. Should someone come to me and say that they would rather prefer to do um, the scan code, for example, um, is it possible for people to use different um, or, or, or use different variations um, across the board? 100%. 100%. That's a definite yes in terms of you have those options, but in most cases when we roll it out, we standardize it to ensure that if somebody calls in at support requesting support, they would get we would immediately know how to support them based on the fact that we've standardized it. But to answer your question, yes, you can basically go through the same steps again, but in most cases you'll need to uh, contact your administrator to reinitiate the setup. But it's very simple and it's very easy to set up as well. Okay. Cool. That's fine. I just thank wanted you. to check. Okay, thank you. All right. Any more questions uh, before we move on? All right, moving on to our next exciting topic, which is my personal favorite, primarily because in today's day and age, you cannot really rely on physical hardware, uh, especially when there's uh, kids around in the house or when you're moving around with your hardware. What I mean by that is that your machine can break, your kids can spill something on it or whatever the case may be. But having peace of mind and knowing that your data is secure is something that is mind blowing. What I mean by that is OneDrive Protect, what we are going to be chatting about in the next couple of seconds. All right, I'm going to just share my screen again and walk you through how to set it up. All right, again, same principle applies. In most cases, you would already have OneDrive set up on your machines, which would basically mean that you either using it to access certain company data files or you storing something in a specific location which is being backed up by, by OneDrive. But today we're focusing on OneDrive Protect. So 
what is one drive protect let me ask you that same question i'm hold on i'm going to shop, stop sharing my screen before we dive into uh, how it looks like and how it works again i'm going to ask the same question in the comments box please comment one if you know what onedrive protect is and zero if you do not know what onedrive protect is all right i got a i got a zero there it looks like, it looks like i'm uh, got a uh, got a couple of zeros there but it looks like i'm sitting with uh, some techies in here which uh, gives me peace of mind in terms of knowing that the data is uh, probably secure so I'm going to proceed to show you guys what OneDrive Protect is. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to set, set up OneDrive on your machine if it is not set up. Again, it depends on the license that you have. And that being said, uh, Mark, if you have the OneDrive apl uh, application license, you would either have already, already have it set up, but I'll show you where to get it if you do not have it set up. OK, I'm going to share my screen again. All right. Again, that open any browser of your choosing. Go again to office.com. I like this site because it's short, straightforward, and easy to remember. All right, so again, just click sign in. And because again, I've built that relationship with this machine, I'm going to get a prompt on my machine on my phone to approve this login. And there we go. I am in. So today, there's, as I mentioned, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, application that uh, Microsoft offers. We are now focusing on OneDrive and specifically OneDrive Protect, which protects your personal data. When you are in this window here, OneDrive, you need to ensure that the OneDrive application is installed on your machine. Nine out of 10 times it is installed if you have the Office products installed on your machine. And in most cases, it does come in pre-installed when you buy a new machine uh, preloaded with uh, the Office um, Microsoft Windows. But if not, if you click sync, you'll notice at the bottom of, I'm just going to move to this, this to the side, you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen where it says getting ready to sync, there's where you can actually select to download the latest version of OneDrive. If you do not have OneDrive on your machine, you'll be prompted to click on there to download it. If you do have it, in this case I do, you'll get another prompt which basically says, do you mean, do you mean to switch to the app? Yes, I'm going to click yes so that it loads the local application. All right, and then I'll get to the screen here which pre-populates my email address. Click sign in. As I mentioned, because as I mentioned earlier on in terms of building that trust relationship with this machine, if you're doing this for the first time, you will be prompted for that multi-factor authentication password again. So I'm signing in. And what you will notice is that it will take you through this nice wizard. This wizard is like a get to know your application type of wizard. A lot of people close this window, but I'll, I'll take you through a, key, a few key components that you need to know, with one being the location of where it stores your actual data. If I go next, it gives you a, nice, a quick overview of how your files should look like once they are synced, but I'll take you to the screen where it gives us a nice idea of the status of your folders. So once you have synced your folders onto OneDrive, onto your machine through OneDrive, a new a new field underneath your file explorer, I'll show you that once you've, you've completed this, will pop up called status. Underneath that status, it will either show a cloud, a green circle, or a round solid circle with the tick inside. The first one simply illustrates that your information is available to you, but is stored on the cloud, which basically means that what is synced onto your machine is the directory of the folders of wherever you're syncing them. And then the second option is the one that basically says the file is now available locally on your machine, but 
should you not use it for a period of about 12 to 14 days, the file will automatically unsynced onto your machine, not deleted, unsynced onto your machine, and your status of that file will basically go to the cloud, which illustrates that it is now available again on the cloud, uh, but not taking up space on your local machine. So for those of us who like to travel or who basically work on large files and do not want that file to be sync, unsync, sync, unsync, you basically want to select this option here, which makes the file always available in your machine. I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, cool. We're going to click next available. The nice thing as well is that the OneDrive application or you can see whatever synced from your machine onto your mobile app. Should you want to download the application, you can just click get application, I'll ask you to enter your number where it sends you a link to download the OneDrive application. And again, you'll just sign in, you'll just sign in accordingly. All right, so we'll get to this page here, which shows us nothing inside. All right, so again, at this point in time, OneDrive Protect is not enabled or set up on your machine. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to be setting up. But before I proceed to the setup, are there any questions from anyone? All right, sweet. OK, thank you uh, for that. So now OneDrive is set up on your machine. Now I'm showing you how to now is OneDrive is synced onto your machine. Sorry, not set up. Um, so now I'm showing you how to enable OneDrive Protect. To do that, you'll proceed to find the OneDrive icon that looks like a cloud at the, on your taskbar. Right click on it. You'll get to this page over here, which shows you more options. You'll click settings. Underneath settings, there's a number of tabs there. One of the most important tabs is that, and one of the most important things to, oh, my mistake. <laughs> I did not share my screen. Oh. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna click cancel there again. I'm going to start to start again, so I'm going to close this page. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up OneDrive Protect. Once OneDrive is synced onto your machine, you will get this cloud over here that basically shows you which account is set up and is synced onto your machine. I'm going to right click on there and um, what you will see is that it gives you more options, but the option we're looking for is settings. Underneath settings, the most important thing to highlight and to take note of and the account, you need to make sure that your account, which is your email address, is displayed under account here. And based on the license that you have, it shows you the amount of space that you have for storing those files. What we are looking for is backup. This is very self-explanatory in terms of what OneDrive is. It is a backup of the following folders, documents, desktop, and your pictures. At the moment, it's the only thing that is currently being backed up by default. And if you click on manage backup over there, it what it does is that it goes through all your files and it tells you what it can back up and what it can't back up. The nice thing here is the fact that for security reasons, certain files cannot be backed up. And again, as I mentioned, it scans your desktop documents and pictures and what it find what it found here that there's a file that it does not like the file type. I'm not too worried about that because these files over here were probably files that I extracted from some somewhere else. And what it's telling me is that PSTs are regarded as non non secure items that it's refusing to back up. We have two options. One, you can rename this file. Two, just remove it from here should it not be an important file. So what I'm going to do for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to put it in a different location to show you how to show you how OneDrive Protect looks. So now I've moved those files from my documents. It shows you the name of the file as well as the location. I've moved those files, so I'm gonna click try again. Again, it scans the three locations. Oh wow, it looks like I found another one there. Okay, it looks like this one did not move. Let me just copy this one out as well. But again, should you not be sure of what to do or get these prompts or errors or whatever the case may be, contact your IT provider. You can almost guarantee you they'll know what to do. What you're looking for there is two green ticks to show you that these files are secure and will be enabled to be backed up. What you need to do now is click start backup. 
the backup will happen in the back end. Very important to highlight whatever amount of files it's selected to backup, it will be uploading those files, which means it will be using your data for the initial backup. You can view the sync progress. Uh, to, another way to get to the sync progress or see what's happening in the background, click on the OneDrive application here, and then you will see the, the, exactly the files that it's backing up. And it also gives you an indication at the top there of how many files it's synced versus how many are remaining, and as well as an estimate in terms of how, how far it's gotten in terms of the files that it's uploaded. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is OneDrive Protect. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and ask again through my explanation and demonstration, do you know what OneDrive Protect is? Please feel free to answer with ones and zeros on the comment section over there. All right, great. I'm getting all ones, which means I'm doing something right. Okay, great. I am now opening up the floor to ask any questions that are related to the security, which is multi-factor authentication, or OneDrive Protect, which, uh, or your backup uh, data protection, which is through OneDrive Protect. I'll open up the floor for a little bit to make sure that I answer or attend to any questions that anybody might have. Well, I see uh, Richard added a comment there in the comment section. Okay, cool. So just to answer a question that probably sitting at the back of everyone's minds, but not necessarily might want to ask it is, why would we use OneDrive Protect? And why would we use multi-factor authentication? I'll start with multi-factor authentication because it was the opening topic. Multi-factor authentication, again, is designed to add a second layer of protection to ensure that your login is protected and you are notified for uh, any unauthorized logins. To, to authorize or authenticate those logins, you can either receive an SMS, you can receive a call, or you can use the app to ensure that you as the owner of the of the account uh, let yourself in. That being said, it is highly recommended to ensure that in the digital world that we're living in today, your data on the cloud is secure and you have peace of mind to know that should there be any unauthorized logged in, they will fail based on the fact that you would have not authorized them as opposed to just using getting your username and guessing your password, which will probably be your cat's name or you lost your daughter's name or your date of birth in most cases. You'll be surprised the passwords you find out there. For OneDrive Protect, OneDrive Protect, as I mentioned, is a backup of your personal data, one being your desktop, one being your documents, and one being your pictures. The primary reason why I'd recommend it is because in, in the world we live in today, unfortunately, Oh, well, fortunately for some of us, as Odette mentioned, it's she's loving working from home, and you also want that flexibility of not being tied down to a server and having to worry about your data not being backed up when you are not in a central location. That being said, OneDrive Protect gives you peace of mind that should, when you have internet access, whatever changes you've made and saved in your documents, desktop, and pictures get backed up onto a cloud account gives you peace of mind in terms of your data retention. The value that is basically going to add, as I mentioned, no, we, and a lot of people know that everyone's now moved to a digital or the cloud, so the number of attempts that people um, do to try and hack that information or use your credentials to get into somebody else gives you peace of mind knowing that you have that second layer of, of security and that is mu the much needed value that you can get out of multi-factor authentication. Value that you can get out of OneDrive Protect, I can tell you now. As I mentioned, hardware as well as our surroundings is a good enough reason to give us sleepless nights because you're thinking now, cool, everything is, is working and everything is stored on my machine. Let me go to sleep. You wake up, you find your laptop, sitting upside down with the broken hard drive or broken screen or the hard drive failed. So knowing that your data is backed up and is retrievable online um, 
gives you that peace of mind and that much needed value. So cool. That concludes from my side. If there are any questions, you can either raise your hand or comment in the comment section. All right, there's a hand raised by Indira there, and there's also comments by Richard. I'm just going to give Indira the platform there to basically ask a question. Sure. Okay, Neba, I hope this is not too much of a silly question, but I'm going to ask it in any case. So, sure. you know, you've showed us how to manage backup, right? So, yes. is this is there something, I mean, I take it, and I don't want to just assume, that, that once it's set up, it happens automatically, right? Um, but is there any way that I can check that my OneDrive Protect is in fact um, doing what it's supposed to be doing? Because I'd hate to get up one day and, you know, when that computer's upside down, then figure out that, okay, something happened where one of the files was problematic, like what you actually demonstrate. How do I know, right, as of this point, that my OneDrive Protect has been doing what it's supposed to be doing? Is there anything that I need to be doing manually or where can I just go and check? I do see the blue cloud, by the way. So I yes. assume that, that that is what actually indicates that it's all fine because there's no red cross on my blue cloud that's sitting at the bottom of my taskbar. Am I checking the right thing? Is there anything else I'm supposed to be checking? Sweet. All right, sweet. Just to answer your question, there's various ways you can check whether the application is running. Again, as I mentioned, in order for it to be working efficiently and successfully, you need internet connection. When you, you do have internet connection, whatever changes you've made will sync up to the cloud as a, as a result, resulting in you getting and making sure that your files are being backed up. So I'm just going to share my screen again. I'll get to your question just now, uh, Richard. Uh, I'll get to your, I'll get to your share. I'll share my screen again now and what you will see on the left, which is what I mentioned earlier on in terms of the status bar over here. This status bar gives you an indication of what the file's status is. If for any reason you do not see the status bar, one of two things is, is basically uh, happened at that point. It mean, either means that your OneDrive is still syncing something else or is, is hanging at some point or your OneDrive application is not running. To ensure that it's running, all you need to do is just open, click on start, Search OneDrive, click OneDrive can almost guarantee you those clouds as well as the syncing status will return. And should you get any crosses or any any errors on your machine in terms of OneDrive, come back to this cloud here. When you click on this cloud at the top here, it'll show you exactly what is causing the error. Should you should you not be able to understand that error or whatever the case may be, again, direct your inquiries to supported solid systems. They can assist you with any errors that are related to OneDrive syncing. And uh, that being said, I just want to know, have I answered your question, Andrew? Yes, thanks, Limo. All right, sweet. Again, actually, something that I forgot to mention, actually, which thank you for bringing this up, Indira, the statuses. So what you will notice, Let's just see if I can find an actual file. Yeah, this one's looks this one looks perfect actually. So you'll notice under status, it shows this round tick here and everything's 100%. If there was a circle going round and round, it would give me an indication that this file is syncing or whatever the case may be. As I mentioned, to show you the first cloud, for instance, if once you confirm this file has been backed up and you know it's taking up space on your machine or whatever the case may be. You want it stored in the cloud but available on your machine. You right click. And then you free up, click on free up space. When you do that, what it does, you'll notice is it changed this to a cloud. It removes or doesn't and ensures that this file does not take up space on your local machine but is in fact stored and backed up onto the cloud. So in an instance where I were to add something in here, that will also get backed up onto the cloud, but not take up space on my machine. So as I mentioned, the now when I open this or open anything in here, what it does is that it downloads this. There's nothing in here, of course, but now if I were to add, uh, let's say an Excel document, you'll see the, it's syncing over there to show you what the status is. And if I right click on there, and as I mentioned, for those traveling people or those people that work on a specific document and do not want to sync and unsync, there's an, you have an option to right click and always keep on this device. What will that will do is that will turn this into a solid green. Whether you have internet or not, 
this file will be sitting on your machine. If you make changes to it, the next time you connect to the internet, it will sync those changes up uh, according to uh, the status of the file. Which brings me to Richard's uh, question. I'm gonna just show, sh uh, stop sharing my screen. Richard's question was, I'm just gonna read it as it is. Uh, give me a sec. Go to the comment section. What is going to, what is it going to cost to basically implement multi-factor authentication? And uh, are there any additional fees? So with the current infrastructure that you guys have, and in the event that you are licensed accordingly, I can almost guarantee you that multi-factor authentication uh, and OneDrive Protect will be included. What does that mean? Multi-factor authentication is a default uh, administrative feature that can be enabled by your administrator, which is already included. So you do not need to spend any more in terms of enabling that. But when it comes to OneDrive Protect, it is very crucial and important to understand the licensing, but nine out of 10 times, as I mentioned, if you have the basic office applications, it will be included as well. It's just a matter of knowing how to enable it, to enable it. And sometimes what is very important to understand is the version of the OneDrive application you use, because that feature that I showed you that sometimes is not visible, does not mean that you're not licensed for it, but it could simply mean that you are running an old version of OneDrive or whatever the case may be. All right, in terms of reports, yes, uh, but I just need to, uh, this is for Thakir, I just need to understand in terms of what type of reports are you looking for? If you're looking for a report that can give you an indication of where, what changes were made in a specific folder, or what changes were made in a specific file, yes, you can get reports in terms of that, and on top of that, you can get what you get, what you can, it comes default with what you get version history. You can go back to a previous version of a specific folder or document to ensure that, uh, for instance, they overrode a certain file, a certain section in a folder. You have the option to roll back those settings, but we can unpack that in, I think, the next session, which basically speaks to OneDrive and SharePoint. All right, and the next question there. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just need to confirm if I have answered your question there. Oh, yes, thank you. All right, sweet. Uh, Richard, you still have your hand up there. Yeah, Nobi, just, um, Nobi, uh, listen to me, Lebo. Um, <laughs> just in terms of Indira's question around just making sure that your OneDrive syncing is, is working and all of that type of thing, can you just show us the settings for the Microsoft OneDrive app where you can make sure that it start to automatically, uh, when you sign into Windows, um, just to make sure that if you restart your computer, you don't have to physically go and open up the OneDrive app again. All right, sweet. Okay, cool. To show you guys that, I can. I'm just going to share my screen again. All right, so it brings us back to that same page with that Excel document that you had. So if you go to the cloud again, to the on the bottom right of the screen, Go settings, settings again. By default, you land in the accounts page. But if you go settings over here, you will notice that under general, there's an option that start OneDrive automatically when I sign into Windows. By default, that is checked. But should you find yourself having to start up OneDrive all the, all the time, just check that setting, make sure that box is checked. And again, excuse me, automatically pause sync when the device is on a metered network. What that means is that if you're using your phone as a hotspot, OneDrive will ask you if you want to continue syncing because that is regarded or, uh, or, um, regarded or considered as a, uh, a metered network. So those are the two components that you can look out for when uh, your OneDrive is, is not running or starting up automatically. Are there any, is, does that answer your question there, Richard? Yep, perfect. Thank you, Lebo. All right, another very important question that um, Moby has asked us in the chat over there. This mobile, this phone, mobile device can get lost, can get uh, damaged as well. Same as with your machine. 
the nice thing is the fact that on initiation or setting up of this Microsoft Authentication app, it is linked to an account. What that what that account is, is your email address of your of your choosing. And the nice thing about that is the fact that it basically backs up your information. On my phone, I have it set up or synced to my email address, which ensures that should I change files, all I need to do is re-download the application, sign in with my username and password, and uh, retrieve that backup that automatically runs every time that I, I uh, uh, set up the application. So now, what is very important to highlight inside this application, uh, with the link that I'm going to add into here, I'll I'll send I'll add the download link for the application as well as uh, include how it's set up, and I'll also include an image that shows you uh, that shows you underneath underneath the settings to make sure that the backup option is enabled. This basically ensures that all the codes that you've scanned and uh, will be backed up, so to save you time from having to re-scan every. Uh, login that you've ever set up. Does that answer your question, Mui? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, cool. All right, I think that concludes uh, our training session, or not training session, our for, of Microsoft 365 fast learning session. Just again, this fast learning session comes from that much needed value that we're just adding with applications that you are currently using. As I mentioned, in turn, increasing your productivity. So we're calling them fast learning sessions because uh, we want to ensure that you you pick up on those small things that could help you improve your productivity drastically. Cool. Are there any other questions before I conclude? All right. That being said. As I mentioned uh, earlier, breakfast is, I mean, uh, feedback is breakfast for champions. Please take two seconds of your time to rate the session uh, out of 10, one being not so nice and 10 being, I want to see you again in the next coming session. Um, that session being, that session being focused on OneDrive and SharePoint. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm getting a lot of tens here. Uh, which is boosting my confidence. Uh, thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for taking the time to actually read through this content. And if there's anything I can improve on my side, you're more than welcome to uh, let me know. Please enjoy the rest of the week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next session. Again, I'm going to be adding those links for the OneDrive, this application on the comment section over here. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Thank you so much.